A French policeman hailed as a hero for his role in ending a deadly hostage standoff has died. The interior minister tweeted this just a short time ago. Lieutenant Colonel Arnaud Beltram had persuaded a gunman to let him take the place of one of the hostages inside a supermarket in Trebes where the incident was underway. He was wounded while entering the store. The gunman was killed by police when they stormed the building. This came after a four-hour standoff. Three others were also killed uh, on Friday by the gunman during the attack. Our Melissa Bell joins us now on the line from Trebes in France. Melissa, run us through the story again of how the lieutenant colonel had emerged as a hero. Uh, it's an extraordinary story of heroism, Cyril. It began, of course, with the events of yesterday morning when the assailant, uh, who's now been identified as Redouane Lactim, uh, hide carjacked, um, uh, went to a carjacking on the out inside Gakasun, first of all, just after 10 a.m., uh, taking the car, using it then uh, to attack a group of four police officers who'd been on a jog, injuring one of them by firing on him, uh, shooting him in the shoulder before then heading off to the town of Treb in the outskirts of Gakasan where this standoff with the police began. The assailant was holed up inside a local supermarket with hostages, although many of the people had managed to escape with the early sound of gunfire. And during that standoff, uh, which uh, lasted, as you say, some time, it was the extraordinary heroism of this man, Arnaud Beltram, that not only allowed lives to be saved, the lives of the hostages in question, but also uh, the standoff to be brought to an end, since when he went in to be exchanged with the female hostages that were being uh, held, once he volunteered to do it, he'd left his phone on uh, so that the officers outside, the special forces who'd gathered in this standoff, prepared to uh, move in to uh, take out this assailant were able to hear what was going on at the first sound of gunfire they went in. Sadly, too late for Arnaud Beltram, who died during the night. Mm. And French investigators still trying to piece together exactly how these attacks came about, and more specifically, who's behind them. So what do we know at this stage about the assailant? Well, Redouane um, Lactim was a man who was known to um, police services. First of all, as a petty criminal, he'd done time in jail till for low-level drug dealing, considered something of a delinquent. But he had also been what the French call fiche S, which means he'd been identified, alerted to security services as someone who was possibly uh, susceptible to radicalization. That had been removed for a short while before it was then brought back quite suddenly. But as we kept being reminded yesterday by uh, the French president, by the interior minister, uh, by, the, by François Moulin, the chief prosecutor, who always speaks in these times of terror attack in France, uh, there had been nothing to suggest that Redouane Lagdim had been about to act. And what the police are now trying to get to the bottom of, and we spent much of the night uh, outside uh, uh, the apartment building where Redouane Lagdim lived here in the centre of Carcassonne, very large police presence and quite a tense situation with many of the local youths uh, threatening to take on any journalist that tried to take a camera too close to the building. What those police officers there are trying to work out, even as they carried out raids in the building, is precisely what sort of network he might have been involved in, how, whether there was anyone else that he had any links with, or whether this was just a man inspired by uh, what ISIS had done, and in particular the acts of Salem uh, um, uh, uh, Islam whose liberation he had requested. He's, of course, the last surviving member of the 13th of November 2015's attack, and his trial is currently ongoing and at the center of a great deal of attention here in France, Cyril. Uh, Melissa, Melissa Bell speaking from the site of the attack, Treb in southern France. Thank you very much. Very sad news about the passing today of uh, Arnaud Beltram, just hours after such a heroic act where he substituted himself for a hostage and ended up losing his life to save others. Thank you, Melissa. Josh Campbell is with me. He's a CNN law enforcement analyst, a former FBI supervisory special agent, and also a former counterterrorism investigator. So Josh, we want your point of view on this. Now, this attack happened in rural France. It was not a high profile target. In fact, much the opposite. There was no symbolic value to it. What does that tell us? 
Well, I think we have many questions that need to be answered, and that will be part of this long-term investigation where investigators really dig into the subject and determine what was his history, what were his associations, and the ultimate goal is to determine what was the motive. Why did he do what he did? I think right now it's still too early to make that determination. We won't know until investigators go through his social media, his contacts, interview people who knew him to really get a sense of what, what the attack was about. And then it we also need to answer the question as far as, uh, you know, any external influence. So was he radicalized by external actors? Was he radicalized by this ideology from afar? Or was it something that was more closer to home? All that will be taken together in totality to find out why he picked the target that he ultimately decided upon. Yeah, and ISIS has claimed responsibility for this. It didn't come as much of a surprise. In fact, the French interior minister had announced that they would probably end up doing this, and they did. Um, ISIS has lost most of its territory in Iraq and Syria. Does that mean that they've also lost most of their power to inspire attacks like these and that this is ultimately an outlier? Or do you think that terrorism, especially in France, has now taken on a life of its own and will continue regardless? Yeah, it's a very good question. I think as you know, counterterrorism experts look at the so-called Islamic State and where they are now, they are being crushed. But as they're crushed, they still have those influential actors that continue to inspire others. So we're not out of the woods yet. And as we've seen, you know, in different parts of the world, thankfully we've had somewhat of a gap in, in these types of attacks. But they are still out there, and these uh, deadly actors still pose a, a potential threat. I think what investigators have to really do now is look and try to determine who are the people that they're looking at. For example, there were reports early on that this individual was known to the government in some respect. And I can tell yeah. you as a former counterterrorism investigator, that is the gut-wrenching uh, you know, feeling that you have if after an event you go back and look through your holdings and find out that this person was someone that you knew. So yeah. what's going to happen is the investigators will be looking into him, determine you know, what was the level of, of their interest. And then they're also going to work with foreign governments, anyone else who may have information, so that they can ensure that these types of attacks don't happen again.